Well, welcome back. We're going into, uh, I guess, our fourth now of eight videos looking at the structural frame. And what we're going to do during this video is really focus uh, our attention on some of the structural dilemmas uh, that are facing you as you're building an organization. And so um, that, that, that those dilemmas are caused by trade-offs between differentiation and integration. How are we going to use these different techniques and then what dilemmas does that kind of cause within the, uh, the company. So here's a little uh, uh, concise uh, uh, chart or table that looks at that trade-off uh, that you're going to have to make as you're going along. So, you know, when you look at gap and overgap, if key responsibilities are not clearly assigned, important tasks are going to fall through the cracks. And then conversely, the roles and activities can overlap, causing conflict. I'm just reading straight from the book. Very easy to do, of course. And this idea of gap and overgap is one of those things that as you're building the organizational structure, as you're looking at how you're going to coordinate meetings, uh, you don't want to have conflict. You don't want to have overgap, but you also don't want to have gaps. And so working that down is going to, uh, and making sure that you've got the right balance there is going to be uh, somewhat of a challenge. Uh, the same is true looking at underuse and overload of uh, employees. So as, if, if your employees are uh, underutilized, they will make up things to do. Sometimes that's very constructive and sometimes it can be very disrupt, uh, de destructive. Uh, second, uh, if, if you overload your employees, they can, you know, this uh, do more with less kind of mentality. There is, an, you know, a breaking point on that where you start to affect the organization because you simply don't have the resources to uh, execute the uh, mission of the uh, organization. So uh, the next one goes to uh, lack of clarity versus lack of creativity. If you're extremely uh, clear on what you want done down to uh, exhausting detail, yeah, and that tends to have an effect on creativity uh, and vice versa. And the example that the book uses is that people typically aren't looking for creativity in um, uh, their McDonald's experience. They're looking for uh, clarity. And if you uh, contrast that with you know an experience at Harvard, it's the exact opposite. They're looking for some clarity, but they're looking for a lot of creativity and innovation and cutting edge you know, a mentor-mentee relationship uh, with a Harvard professor um, that's at the, you know, cutting edge of research, there's a lot of creativity involved with that type of a relationship. Again, you've got a, a dilemma between excessive autonomy or excessive interdependence. Uh, you can create a uh, mechanism or a, a structure where nothing gets done but meetings, and those meetings lead to no progress because you've just got too much interdependence uh, and then with excessive uh, autonomy it's you know like shooting a blunderbuss uh, gun the, the shots can go anywhere uh, too loose or too tight goalless or goal bound uh, and then responsiveness associated with the organization these are other types of structural uh, dilemmas where you've got this uh, type of a trade-off uh, associated with um, um, uh, the, the organization. I'll end with uh, uh, a short story when I was at the uh, military academy uh, and this goes back to that uh, being uh, you know the responsibilities you know um, the, uh, the chief academic officer who's a, a one-star general received a very threatening uh, email uh, from someone down in the uh, Department of uh, Information Management that he was not filing his documents um, correctly and not following policies. Uh, now, the, the, the policies are, are uh, important and everyone should follow them, but probably you don't want to send that to a one-star general. You might want to send it to their administrative assistant or uh, one of the deputies and let them take care of that. Uh, so anyway, the, 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 uh, the chief academic officer uh, sent me a note uh, uh, asking me why she, he was being threatened uh, by uh, someone in tennis shoes down in the Department of Information Management. 
And we intervened, and of course they were very apologetic, uh, promised it would never happen again, and away we go. And six weeks later, she sent him another note uh, saying he still uh, ha hadn't corrected his uh, documents, and uh, she sh he should come down to visit with her so that she can train him on, on how to do documents. So again, somewhat humorous, um, the uh, uh, this idea of strict adherence to policies and regulations sometimes is counter to getting the mission done. And so you, you just have to balance those things. All right, well, very good. We've talked about uh, seven examples of structural dilemmas. Uh, we've talked about uh, those kind of trade-offs associated with this and that the uh, as you're looking at a organization, you've got to balance these and look at some of the structural imperatives that we covered last lesson um, to do this. So it, it, it takes forethought, takes a little bit of intent, it takes balancing. Uh, there is no one right answer that fits every organization and, and instead it has to be tailored uh, to the situation and the company uh, and again that's, that's why the, the structural dilemmas, the structural imperatives are uh, important. All right, next video we're going to get into uh, Mitzberg's uh, model and look at five structural configurations and then associate that with real world companies and real world examples. So thanks for listening and I look forward to uh, seeing you in the uh, next video which uh, should be video five.